so um, my my experience. Well, so I was hired in November as the dietitian, a registered dietitian for the Y. Um, I worked, or I went to, so I did my internship to be a dietitian. You have to do an internship for nine months, I think. I might be forgetting. It might be seven months. Um, but you have to apply and get accepted. And anyway, I did mine through, uh, I did my undergraduate through UWSP in Stevens Point, and then I went to Iowa State through for my um, ha half of a master's degree, my internship, and then in that internship, I got to go to Ghana, Africa for a month of it. Whoa. So that was, yeah, it was really cool. It was a great yeah. experience. It was sad too, you know. We were researching villages and their nutrient deficiencies, and so it was hard to. It was hard too, but it was a great experience. Um, and then right out of out of uh, my internship, after I got licensed, I worked as a dietitian at a skilled nursing facility for four years. It was a great experience for clinical, um, and I loved the part where I got to talk to the residents. However, most of my job was documentation um, and assessment, which is fun for me too, but I'm really a people person, so this is more my jam, you know. But it gave me a really good background for understanding chronic diseases because obviously there, there was a lot of comorbidities and issues going on in the nursing home. And then I did work at a naturopathic clinic for a year, um, until I worked here. What's I was a naturopathic yeah. clinic? Yeah, it's a clinic that's um, focused on holistic methods, so they, they use oh, more like herbal remedies, mm -hmm. ho homeopathic. So you know that stuff? So I learned about it, yes. I, I didn't get to do a lot of educating on it. I was able to learn, but I mostly did reception work. Oh. Um, so that was one of the reasons I started looking elsewhere, because I really love the education piece. and. Um, so I loved the interaction part of that job, but I didn't get so much get to like educate or you know empower people with um, information that will help them. So, um, and then the services I offer here, uh, I wor will work one on one with clients. Um, so if you're interested and you're a member of the Y, or if you're not, I'll be able to work with you. Um, it's a little more expensive for non-members. For members, it's $50 for the first hour-long session, and then it goes down to $25 for the half-hour session to follow up. Um, and then for non-members, it's $60 for um, the first hour-long session and $45 to follow up. But it's real, which is really a great deal for to, to work with a dietitian. So um, yeah, so if you're interested or you know anyone that might benefit from my services, I'd love to work with them. Um, chronic diseases, gut issues, athletic performance, disordered eating, mindful eating, um, eating through the life cycle, prenatal, postnatal nutrition, um, family nutrition, and then I have a question mark by weight loss because my primary focus is on get, helping people develop healthful habits. So sometimes with weight loss, when we focus on weight loss, it can cause uh, unhealthy habits to develop, right? Like, so you can cut out, you know, only eat, like, well, I really want this cheesecake. So you eat the cheesecake, but then you don't eat anything else. Right. Um, <laughs> so it's, I'm, I focus on balance and like really being able to, to sustain what you're practicing. Um, and then I offer nutrition programs here. So the Nutrition 101, of course, you're here. Um, and then we have diabetes, a diabetes program coming up next month. It's focused on, it's to target both people who are interested in preventing diabetes as well as those who have been diagnosed with pre-diabetes or actual diabetes. Um, so if you're interested in that, we're going to have information about that out soon. It does have a cost to it. It's $25, but it's four sessions, one hour a week. Uh, and we're going to have a morning and an evening session. So. If you're interested in that, um, we'll have info about it out soon, and you may even be able to sign up at the front desk already. I'm hoping to do a mindfulness in eating program sometime soon, and finding that's something that people are really needing and interested in. And then someone had requested a how to use greens in your diet class. I'm hoping to put one on like that. Um, thinking about menopause, classes about postmenopause or perimenopause. Um, just to help women to be able to eat optimally for that time period in their life. And now we're going to do the icebreaker. So you probably all noticed that it, it seems like the ice has been broken pretty well, but we'll still, we'll still do it. So at your tables, you should have um, 
some, a, a food item. So I want you amongst yourselves to talk about what your favorite way to eat that food is and or maybe you don't like that food. So just discuss the food. At night. Okay, we're standing at night. You could have a half a one at lunch. Just don't have it every day. Once in a while. Okay. So um so we'll move now into the presentation. Uh, thanks everyone for participating and talking. I hope you feel a little warmer now, warmed up. Um, Always want the warm assumptions. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So food is more than just food, right? We use food for celebrations, right? Birthday parties, graduation parties. We have cake. We use it for a reward. So when my um, nephew was getting potty trained, they gave him M&Ms or a, a marshmallow every time he used the potty. And we reward ourselves with food too. You know, I was good this week, so I'm gonna have a burger. Or I'm gonna have that steak. Or a scoop of ice cream. Or a scoop of ice cream, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we use food to punish ourselves too. So we might not have done well this week, so I can only have the salad. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I don't deserve to eat anything else. Okay. I ate too much yesterday, so mm -hmm. today it's mm -hmm. Ain't that good to do, though? If you eat too much one day, just to stay on salads the next day? As long as it's healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, if, you're, if it's balanced, it, you know, if it's a salad with a good amount of protein, you're getting good fiber. But what it can do is if you decide, oh, I ate poorly this day, and then you deprive yourself the next day with of carbohydrates especially, that can lead to a, a binge and you might eat more carbohydrates than well, you normally explains. would. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 Our bodies are designed to, we have a mechanism in our bodies to, we want that fast energy, which is carbohydrates. Um, so I discourage cutting carbohydrates out completely and encourage high carbo, like high quality carbohydrates. For example, the lentils, the beans, whole grains, um, foods, carbohydrates with fiber. And it, fruit is even a high quality carbohydrate. You know, it's got carbs in it, but it also has a lot of nutrients that benefit our bodies. What do you guys think this one is about? <laughs> That's it, no. But what's the reason we're eating these foods? Can you like? Because comfort food. Comfort food. And they yeah. Taste good. Yep, yep. They they taste good and and darn it, I had a terrible day, so I'm gonna get myself a Starbucks I coffee. That. Or yep. I'm so it's it's comfort. Shamrock shakes are back. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got to get one a year, right? Okay. One a year. Um. So what do you guys think this is about? Yep, when we, we just eat, yep, crunchy stuff, it's sometimes food stress, we eat foods for when we're under stress, sometimes we eat mindlessly because we're bored, just in front of the TV, or I'm just going to grab myself something because I'm bored, you know, I'm just trying to pass the time. So, so you probably um, never keep that stuff in your home. No, um, my my focus is on balance, so like I rec I have had to work through to the point, and some people are raised this way where they're able to just um, they they grew up in a way where like food wasn't it wasn't like high pressure of like this is a bad food and this is a good food, so we only eat these foods at this time. Where so if you can move past that and work through to the point where you can. Ha enjoy like a, an Oreo, you know, just one, one, you know, and then recognize like I could have more if I wanted later, but it probably wouldn't feel good in my body, you know, to have more than one right now. Mm. So I've had to like kind of work through to the point where I'm able to do that. But yeah, in the past I had very much so was like, no, these foods aren't in my house because I don't want to eat them and they're bad for me. But I had to like really work through some techniques to be able to accept because it wasn't realistic. And especially for the kids growing up, because yeah. most of us, mm -hmm. we, we grew up with foods like that. Mm -hmm. I yeah. Mean, that's yeah. I still eat well, food. <laughs> and I love it. it. My <laughs> grandma lived with yeah. us and there was dessert. So this one is actually more about 
cult the culture you grew up in or what you were raised in, right? So my, I had a nutrition professor who grew up eating Spam and American cheese sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and she said, I will not try them now because I know it will ruin my childhood for me, wow. <laughs> you know? So, but, but some of us, I mean, obviously there's different ethnic backgrounds that have, like for example, kimchi. Have, has anyone ever had kimchi? Don't yeah. Know what it is. What is that? It's, it's fermented. It's it's fermented cabbage. Yep, right here. Oh, I it, was oh. Oh. Yeah, it kind of looks like spaghetti. Yeah. But it's fermented cabbage and it's spicy. It's Korean. We actually have a Korean restaurant in Stevens Point um, that sells it, and it's like it's actually very good for you. But it's difficult to if you are not used to it and you're not someone who likes to try new foods, you probably won't <laughs> ever try it because it's got this very strong smell. Um, but it's, it's, anyway, I say, and then if, if we grew up in the, like, people who grew up in the South, people from that area tend to um, eat a lot of really heavy, greasy foods because that's just what they grew up with. And so it's difficult to break away from those habits. So food is more than just nutrition, right? Food has, we have a lot of ties to food emotionally. Um, yeah. So, Yes, that's true too. So that's something that I like to focus on too. Like I have some techniques and exercises to help people be more mindful as they're eating um, and to, to enjoy food but not feel like they're going to eat, ton, have to eat tons of it if they have access to, you know, high foods that aren't necessarily the healthiest. So today we'll talk about macronutrients. We talked a little bit about them so far. Carbohydrates. So I'm going to play this video, and I think this, the audio for it may not work. Oh, it's not going to. Oops, oops, oops. It may not work for me. Um, that's okay. I was hoping if I cast it. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Who eats one Oreo? Put your mic by the speaker and here. Right. You know, I have to tell myself, well, they're still going to be there. And you don't have to eat them all today because they'll still be there. But once you get a taste of them, you have that craving for them. And then it's three or four. And yeah. It's like half a two. <laughs> they don't stop cooking. So then. Okay. Yes. I, I didn't eat my anything no. here. Well, there wasn't anybody selling any. Ooh, it's working! Okay, that's loud, huh? Hi, my name is Mindy. I am a registered. Work for me. Um, that's okay. I was hoping if I cast it. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Who eats one Oreo? Put your mic by the yeah. speaker and yeah. right. You know, I have to tell myself, well, they're still going to be there, and you don't have to eat them all today because they'll still be there. But once you get a taste of them, you have that craving for them. And then it's three or four, and yeah. it's like half a two. <laughs> they don't stop cooking, so then. Okay. Yes. I, I didn't eat my anything no. here. Well, there wasn't anybody selling any. Ooh, it's working! Okay, that's loud, huh? Hi, my name is Mindy. I am a registered dietitian at Second Harvest, and I would love to show everyone a little experiment on digestion. So I have here 100% whole wheat bread and a white bread or refined bread that I've placed in stomach acid. So let's take a look at what's going on. So we have here the 100% whole wheat bread, and I just take the lid off. So it's pretty intact. I mean, it's still, it's wet, it's mushy. It's been sitting in acid for a while here. And let's take a look at the white. Oh man. So the white one is also intact. Um, it looks just a little bit more, I'm noticing more slimy to it, a little bit. Oh, it's breaking apart there. Um, so, oh, as you'll see, it's just kind of coming undone. Again, let's take a look at that whole wheat one, the 100% whole wheat one. It is more intact. 
So now we're gonna take a look at the components of a whole grain. So this will really bring us back to why one would digest a little bit more quickly than the next. The whole grain's composed of three different parts. We have this outer layer, which is called the bran. That's the fiber rich source. You have this inner lighter yellow portion, which is called the endosperm. That's the energy rich part, the carbohydrate rich source. And then there's the inner germ, which has a lot of vitamins and minerals. So what happens is when we have a white bread or refined grain, is that they're actually removing the refinement process, removes the bran and the germ. So you're just left with the endosperm. So when we have a whole grain, as you'll notice, this is the stomach right here, but that grain will stay in the stomach longer because of the fiber that we saw that was in the Part of the whole grain picture when it's refined so with that white bread as you notice it digested more quickly but it stays in your stomach not as long as the whole grain does so the fiber that's in the whole grain will actually keep you fuller longer but it also has some other great benefits too so one of the best parts about fiber is not only will it help things stay in your stomach it'll help food uh, digest more slowly but it also is very very beneficial for um, your gut more or less so it will actually act like a little broom that sweeps through and cleans out all the bad stuff so it's really really beneficial for your health you're probably asking well this is great information Wendy but all right yeah so hopefully a little visual was um helpful. so wheat bread was better than the white bread Oh, sure. Even though the white bread broke down faster, right. the white bread was better. It will stay in your stomach longer and keep you full. Yep. So what about the gluten though? Well, it depends. So not everyone has a gluten intolerance. So it depends on, on your body. And so if you notice that gluten is causing a problem, then that's something you could try to do is take gluten out. Um, there's also ways to make the nutrients more accessible in whole grains because in that bran there's some um, anti-nutrients. I don't know if anyone's ever heard about that. So yeah, so it's like, I think I talked to you about it in a, in a rant, um, but it's, it's, uh, it blocks the enzymes, some of your digestive enzymes, which is why some people get bloating or have issues with whole grains. Um, and then it also uh, can bind minerals that are, the grains are rich in minerals, but on the outside, there's phytic acid, which has um, phosphorus in it. And then that can bind to the good minerals. And then you just excrete it. You actually don't end up absorbing it. OK, I got a question. Yeah. Whole grains. You just said whole grains will make you bloat. It depends on, for some people. Right. Yep. Right. Um, whole grains is the, right here, right? Whole grains. Goya bread, rice, oatmeal, cereal, pasta. Mm -hmm. All this is whole grains mm -hmm. or just this first? Well, all of those are, are high value or high quality carbohydrates. Okay. Yeah, I did, I did start out just making a list of grains and then I, I thought, well, no, there are foods that are high, like good, in, good carbohydrates that are not necessarily grains, right, like right. potatoes and squash, right. and okay. things like that, so. But it's better to get these in whole and wheat like bread and pasta? We want to do, yeah, whole grains is better because um, because of the refinedness of how the it was breaking down in the um, stomach acid more quickly. So it doesn't keep your body satisfied as, oh, as long. So it's okay. going through your stomach faster, which is why you can get really hungry after eating white bread versus eating wheat bread. It'll last you longer. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's benefits to that, but there's also a high amount of nutrients in whole grains that isn't present for refined grains. It can also help with blood sugar absorption. So if you're um, eating refined grains, you're going to absorb the sugars in that much more quickly than you would if you were eating something that had fiber in it. Yeah, so that's... What's the difference between whole and refined? That's, that's one of the processes to um, allow more to, to break down the phytic acid and um, the enzyme inhibitors is by sprouting. Um, but some of the breads have, they say sprouted, but then you look at the back and it's, you know, mostly sprouted, but then there's just some normal grains in there, um, which is, I mean, it's, it's okay, you know, probably better than just buying regular bread. So there's levels of like whole grains are better than white bread, right? Sprouted is probably, having some sprouted is probably better than just eating the whole. So are they talking sprouted? Because I'm doing some sprouted 
you know, um, broccoli, you know, making my own broccoli. Oh, you are? And is that what they're talking about? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, what are yeah. you doing? Mm -hmm. Except making it into bread? Except, except you would use, you could use a grain and do the same process that you're doing, I think. Oh! Only it would sprout the grain. Yeah, okay, so you'd start right, to have then, little okay. stems coming Got off it. of the grain. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah, so so whole grains. Um, I have it I have it listed for you, the, the whole grains, but and also just the high quality carbohydrates. Um, they're high in fiber, B vitamins, folate, selenium, potassium, magnesium. So there's tons of nutrients in the whole grains versus the refined. Other carbohydrate foods, most fruits, nuts and seeds, um, dairy. So milk and yogurt, uh, vegetables, potato, corn, peas, squash, and tomatoes are the ones that are higher in carbs. Okay, another question because, you know, I'm trying to get a handle on my eating and yeah. so I've been eating nuts and seeds uh -huh. and I'm eating a quarter cup of, of this kind of nut and a half a cup of this kind of nut. Mm, okay. And yeah. But now you're telling me it's high in carbohydrates, and that's something that I'm trying not to be high in carbohydrates. Well, I would, cons I would consider it a higher, a higher carbohydrate food, um, but it also is high in protein and fat. So there's a lot of good things for nuts. Um, yeah. It ain't doing nothing. <laughs> They're also high in calories. If they are. Right. They're high yeah. in fat. Half so a cup, half a half cup, a cup is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and you have to use the raw are, nuts, not the roasted or uh, anything in oil. Okay. Well, well, see, you need to come to more of these classes. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things we could talk about yeah. with nuts. Sunflower seeds, um, like a tablespoon of sunflower seeds, that's very good for you. Mm -hmm. Even pistachio nuts. Um, I do them all. I bought them all. Oof. But, but not raw. If you need, if <laughs> yeah. you need I bought selenium, rose. all you have to do is eat two Brazil. Oh, I already talked. I talked a little bit about this already. You're right. kidding. So I did, I did touch on this a little bit because we were talking about it, and it does relate to nuts. Um, so the legumes, beans, grains, nuts, and seeds. Also, shameless plug for the Community Health and Nutrition Facebook page if you haven't liked it like it. This is just a post that I put on there last week. Um, so we were talking about bloating in, in, in with whole grains. For some people, it could be related to the healthy foods they're eating, legumes, legumes beans, grains, nuts, and seeds. They're all nutrient dense and super healthy, um, but they have two things in them that might be causing problems. One is phytic acid, which is an anti-nutrient in beans, legumes, and grains that has the mineral phosphorus bound to it. The other is enzyme inhibitors, um, which are substances in nuts, seeds, grains, and beans and legumes that reduce the action of your digestive enzymes. So the enzymes that normally would be helping to break down that stuff aren't um, able to do it because of the enzymes inhibitors. Not all of the enzymes, but um, just some of them aren't able to do their job. So phytic acid, if it's not neutralized, it can bind to minerals like copper, magnesium, zinc, calcium, and iron. Um, and then it makes your body unable to absorb them and you just excrete them out. And then the enzyme inhibitors, if they're not neutralized, they'll affect some of your digestive enzymes, as I mentioned, you know. So, um, so the ways to, one of the easiest ways to do, that, to neutralize is just to soak. And some of you probably are already doing that. You, you soak your beans overnight. Um, for nuts, it's a little harder, more of a process, and I don't always do it. You would have to soak them overnight, and then you would have to slow roast them or put them in your oven um, at a low temperature. So, but if you're interested in that, we can talk more about it, or even you can suggest it as a class. Um, also, check out the Facebook page because I'm every week posting something new on there. Fats. So when we think about fats, really the biggest thing we're thinking about is, is our hearts. Um, so high levels of saturated fat in the diet has been linked to heart disease and other heart conditions. 
Uh, the biggest thing we talk about with fats is having more unsaturated fat in the diet than saturated fat. But not cutting saturated fat out completely, especially because we live in Wisconsin and we have access to yummy dairy foods. Um, and they're nutritious and they're good, they are good for us. It's just we want to try to focus on the unsaturated fats. So those are, I have it listed on your sheet, the things like, um, oh, here we go. There are things like meat, or I mean, are unsaturated, I wanted to talk about, are more from plant sources. So you're, they're going to be avocado, canola, olive oil, um, avocados and artichokes, fatty fish like salmon, herring, and bluefin, tuna, and nuts and seeds are high in your unsaturated fat. So that's what we want more of in our diet. It keeps our cell mem so in our bodies we have cells and um, fats make up the cell membrane, the outside of the cell. So it keeps our cell membranes flexible, able to do their job. Saturated fats, if we have too much of them, make it rigid, and then the cells aren't able to do their job as much as they, they should. Um, our saturated fats are going to be more from uh, the animal products, so meat, dairy, yogurt, milk, butter, cheese, and coconut oil is also a saturated fat. And how is that a saturated fat? when it's a plant. Yes, that's the interesting and different, right? Um, but it just is. The coconut oil is, and I think palm oil mm -hmm. is too. It is. Yeah, so I can't, I can't explain to you the like biology of why the plant is that way, but I do know it's a saturated fat. And there's different means of absorption for coconut oil versus butter. So um, we could May, I probably should continue on, but um, there is some interesting nutrition knowledge and research on that. I got a question. If you take the whey out of the dairy, okay, because I make my own cream cheese, so I take the whey out. Sure. Is that taking the saturated fat out of it then, right? The whey? Yeah, because whey is the sat is the. Well, whey is a protein. So in dairy, there's whey and casein. Right. And so. Casein is more in your cheeses. Yeah. So when you, obviously curds and whey, right? Like, so you're making yeah. cheese. Yeah. So the, the stuff that comes off is the whey. So that's a protein, you're not taking the fat out. Okay, that's what I was curious about. Thank you. Protein. So with protein, it's kind of similar to fat where we think about, we want to focus more on the lean meats than the um, meats that are high in fat. So lean or heart healthy protein, um, tofu, beans, eggs, white meat, poultry, lean cuts of beef and pork. Fish, now fish is, is a higher fat one, but um, the fat is the good fat that we talked about, the unsaturated fat. So omega-3s, fish are high in, you may have heard of that, or you may be taking an omega-3 supplement. Is tuna fish okay? That's the only fish I like. <laughs> yeah, tuna fish is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, nut and nut butters is also high in protein. And then your high fat protein would be dark meat, poultry, meats with fat marbling, so the fat that you can actually see on the meat, uh, and then dairy and dairy products. So something to consider, and we're going to do a little activity here. Let's see. Where am I at for time? Oh, I have five minutes. Darn. Lighter. That's okay. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about um, meatless meals. Has anyone ever d incorporated, does, any, does anyone incorporate that into their diet already? Yeah, good. Okay, so maybe you'll be good at this game. Um, so the foods with complete proteins are meat and meat products, eggs, dairy and dairy products, soy and soybean products, but you can make a complete protein from non-animal foods. So the way that you do that is by combining nuts and seeds with grains, mm -hmm. grains with beans or le and legumes, and beans and legumes with nuts or seeds. So those combinations make a complete protein. As much as a piece of meat would, correct? Sure. Is what you're saying? Oh man, this slide didn't do what I wanted it to do. That's okay. What if you eat? Um, and it's all it is is beans. And mm -hmm. it's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds really good. I might eat that because I'm 
beans. Yeah, I really like beans too. So I was going to have you guys come up with a meal. Actually, I, can, I still can't. Here's the one I came up with. So oats plus almonds. I came up with a oatmeal bowl with almonds and blueberries. I do that. I eat that. I just started doing that. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, I eat that. Yeah. So in your tables, come up with what a, a little a meal that you think would go well. It could or a snack. So it could be like cookies or maybe I don't know. I'm not going to give you any more ideas. You come up with it. Got leftovers.